they will be out in the conquering business, not to bring peace, but to bring prosperity to their own countries and situations. So Rome was taxing the people of Palestine quite heavily. Okay? And it's a contested thing because the people were very restless about being an occupied territory. Sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. They didn't like it at all. And they were people who were resistant, okay? And fighting back. And here is Jesus, and he's walking a tight rope. And there is a plot. The thing is, he's very popular. So none of the political groups around really like him because they don't know where he's going with this and what his popularity will lead to. So a group of very unusual people in, in the sense of they're not likely allies. They're the Herodians who are in favor of the Roman occupation. They've got good jobs with the conquerors. And there are the Pharisees who are not too keen, usually. And some or other, these two, get together. You know, you kind of have the stories that people get closer. But you know, very unlikely. So there they are getting together and they said, we're going to trap him. We're going to make him say something that will either make the people hate him or make him get arrested and be rid of him. So they come to him and if you notice, if you look at your gospel, they're coming all sweet and sweet and smiling. Oh, teacher, we know you are sincere and teach the way of God and show deference to no one. Da, 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 da. So, should we pay taxes to the emperor or not? So the trap is, if he says no, which is what people would like, because this is the conquering, you know, empire that he wants, then the authorities will grab him and arrest him. But if he says yes, pay taxes to the emperor, the people will turn against him. That's their plan. But Jesus is not stupid. Jesus is very politically astute. And he says, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me a coin. No. Taxes to the emperor had to be paid Roman coin, which was a very, they had to change the money and get the proper coin to pay the taxes in. And they, they fish out the coin, the Roman coin, and they say, okay, and he says, all right, who sends out the coin? Caesar's, okay. If the Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. So he's not answered one way or the other. And we're going to look at it later as to what that might be. Some people interpret it differently, which was exactly the thing Jesus did. He had, there are a couple more stories in the Bible about Jesus and taxes, because there was the Roman tax that they had to pay, but they also had to pay the temple tax to the Jewish authorities. And another time they got a uh, hold of Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, and they said to Peter, Well, does your master pay the temple tax? And Peter does not, and Jesus comes to him and says, Okay, should we pay the temple tax or not? And Peter says, eh? Jesus says, Tell you what, go and catch a fish. And the first fish you get, it will have a coin in it. Take out the coin and use that to pay the tax. 
that the fish did it out. So he got the tax and he paid it. And the head of the tax was paid because he said, you know, when somebody is taxing, when the king is taxing, is it for do his children pay the tax or the strangers? And he said, well, the strangers, it's not the family who pay the tax. He said, oh, we're the family, we don't have to pay the tax, but we'll pay it. So again, he's saying, all right, we're following the law. So the religious law, we pay that. The Roman law, the cast, then he's not following it. But he's being astute. But he's not, he's still not saying you have to do it. But, and here is where, for us, what does this mean? All of us here, including those who are born in this country, have histories where empires of one stripe or another have been in control and not necessarily in our favor. In our favor yeah? And Jamaica and you know, Jamaica is way up in the Caribbean, see near the Atlantic, what they would have called the most best, but you know, certain, and all of that. And a lot came the Spanish and conquered and destroyed the people who were living there and brought people who look like me from Africa to work to enrich the Spanish people. And then came the English who beat up the Spanish and, you know, again, extracted the wealth of the country to enrich certain parts of this country. Here, I was hearing about, but you didn't know, um, you know, the different people who have moved in and conquered you know, you have the Celts, then you have the Anglos and the Saxons all came conquering and then the Normans. And this country has been conquered and had emperors and empires and then they forgot that they were conquered and set up empires and conquests elsewhere. And one of the things you learn is that people who have been oppressed when they get in the seat of power, they can become just as oppressive as those who used to oppress them. They kind of learn from the conquerors. Those of us who have ears to hear, let us hear. And let us learn how we behave when we get from under a situation. But right now, the story of Jesus and the taxes. Pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So what belongs to Caesar? Wait, see, all right, the money belongs to Caesar because it has Caesar's head on it. Yeah, but what belongs to God? And you could argue that actually everything belongs to God, including what goes into making money. So Caesar doesn't really own anything. And our clue for this as well is in our own Testament lesson where God says, okay, Cyrus, you are my chosen and my anointed. But guess what? I am the one in charge. In Jamaica, you would say, I run things. You know? So, yeah, you're my anointed, but I am overall. So is Jesus thinking at that and saying, you know, Caesar, not necessarily about the guy, God, you're the one in charge, but you know, God is ultimately in charge and it all belongs to God. And if we work out that this world in which we live ultimately belongs to God, then we conduct ourselves and how we treat others as though we are all, God is the ultimate ruler.
the emperor or whatever it is. These local ones are for a time and a season. And also, on a very practical level, in Jamaica we say, if your hand is in the lion's mouth, you have to gently take it out. You take time to take it out. Jesus, his hand was in the lion's mouth. They were trying to trap him. He was aware of what was going on and he subtly got out. We have situations to deal with where we have to be clever and subtle so that we don't get trapped in the same things that are not necessarily in our favor. Without lying, Jesus did lie, but he managed to be really subtle. So we have to be aware of the situation we're in. When you're going for, you know, your appointments, for before the other immigration words with cruel and sorry swell slot um, you have to know where you are and what you're saying and you have your advocates to help you to frame what it is you're saying. This is very, very much following Jesus' pathway, being wise. But we keep in mind that when Jesus decided that it was the time that he would finally come in confrontation with the authorities, they didn't trap him. He decided, this is it now, I will be absolutely clean. And the last time he has his story, we have where he goes into the temple. Remember that story? Where they are changing money, and this is to pay for the sacrifices and so on. So it's a kind of tax. And he says, no, the way they are doing this is absolutely unfair and unjust. And he turns over the tables, and he chases the people out. Because he has said at last, this is it, I'm with you. Because they have been trying to trap him before. He knew that once he did that, he was making a statement that said, I am saying what I'm saying. And yes, it will be the end of me on this earth. But it's worth it now. Only God can tell us when we stand up in a particular way for things and when we need to be subtle. But all our lives are a beacon and a testimony to God's wisdom and God's justice. And God will lead us in the right words at the right time in God's wisdom.